So, I heard painting a box head is all the rage right now. Well, I still do have a box. This one to be precise. Dominion marked the start of the current edition of Age of Sigma. Serving as a great starting point, it gives you a formidable force of orcs and stormcast eternals. The cunning tribe of the Krill Boys clashing with the religious fervor of Sigma salads. And it were indeed these zealots that sparked my imagination and also reminded me of something. Final Fantasy XIV is one of my favorite games that I ever had the pleasure of playing. Especially the Shadowbringers expansion delivered, in my mind at least, one of the strongest storytelling that can even go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some stories of single-player games. One of the key antagonists are the so-called Sin Eaters, a faction of corrupted animals, people and other creatures that have been basked in primordial light, giving most of them an angelic look while completely warping their minds. In the game, these beings behave more like zombies, acting purely on instinct with a need to consume. I have to admit, I really like this approach. Twisting the standard good force of light into an antagonistic force, while the dark side is painted as the well good side. And while I don't think that Stormcast Eternals are acting like zombies, I do like the idea of light corruption so much that it could be applied to a bunch of reanimated fanatics. Also on the practical side, the look of these Sinitas seemed like an easy and especially fast color scheme. And with that, I had my idea set for my eternal Sinitas. Now at the first step, I needed to build the models, which was pretty straightforward. All models in this box are push-fit models. That means that you don't necessarily need plastic cement to build these. Using this way of assembly sometimes prevents the pieces from fitting together perfectly, which results in huge gaps. So I tend to cut the male joints and use plastic cement to achieve a more fitting bond. Sure, this didn't prevent all the gaps, so I used milliput to fill in the most egregious gaps. For the bases, I went with my standard method of adding bark chips on top of the base. This adds a rocky and uneven surface to the base, which looks much more natural than the usual flat base. This takes a bit of time to prepare for sure, but in the end, the results are well worth it. I adhered the bark to the base with super glue and used liquid super glue to seal in the bark. I also filled in unnatural looking gaps with milliput. And for the models that already come with decorative base bits, I again used Milliput to make the transition between bit and base a bit more natural. After assembly and adding texture paste to the few areas, I started with painting. Every model in this badge got a priming with brown. After that I used my airbrush to add a dark violet ink from beneath. This results in a very dark but still chromatic shadow color, which would contrast perfectly with my approach to the light infused armor. This is Nocturna Shadow, a greenish shadow color I mix with airbrush thinner. A few drops suffice to make it work with the airbrush. I applied this mix generously in a 180 degrees angle from above. I repeated this with this light green blue, which almost registers as a white after applying it in a 90 degrees angle from above. To finish the airbrush step, I applied pure titanium white ink directly from above. Now after that I applied a coat of GW's Apothecary White Contrast Paints, which is a great way to shade white armor in my opinion. This stuff is not nearly as aggressive in its tone compared to your standard black and brown shades. Alternatively, you could mix yourself an oil wash 
and then clean the exposed parts afterwards. As a last finishing touch, I used the pure light green blue and highlighted a few areas with a brush to get rid of some unwanted stains. Another element that I wanted to apply universally to each model was gold. Here you could simply go with metallic paints, but I wanted to try out an idea for a quick and dirty method of non-metallic gold. Luckily enough, the golden details of the Sinitas in Final Fantasy XIV appear to be not as polished or shiny and therefore are much more subdued. This makes the NMM approach much easier, as you don't have to place so many highlights. So first I went in with Nasdaq yellow contrast paint and painted every golden detail in that color. If you remember my video about my Chaos Legion S, you might recognize this idea as I used the same paint over metallic layer to get a true metallic gold. With all the details painted, I shifted to standard acrylics for the highlights. Here I basically used three different paints. First titanium white from Winsor & Newton. This is artist grade paint and its coverage is simply great. With a price tag of around $20 or euros, it could be considered a bit pricey, but if you break it down in price per milliliter, it outperforms almost every miniature paint. However, you'll probably want to thin it down a bit more. The other two paints I use are from Vallejo's Game Color line, Pale Yellow and Beastie Brown. I used Pale Yellow to set the first highlights. Here I simply targeted the most exposed areas, like the top of the shields, as well as the edges of the gold trim. After that I added more and more titanium white to the pale yellow and applied it over the previous layer, but a bit more selectively. In a few spots I added a watered down beastie brown to get a bit more definition. And when that was dry, I added pure titanium white as the final highlight. Now at this point, let me take the time and let me welcome my newest and first ever patrons. Kim Harderfork, Noah Dillon and Faulmel. Thank you so very much for joining my Patreon and helping me with making these videos. If you also like my videos and want to help out with a small donation, you can do so over at Patreon as well. Right now I have one tier situated at 3 euros or dollars that gives you exclusive access to previews and behind the scenes material. I'm also planning to post some polls where you can vote on upcoming topics. Thank you again for your support and now let's get back to painting. At that stage I also thought about giving each unit something to stand out on the battlefield. No matter if it's Age of Sigma or Warhammer 40k, Games Workshop armies tend to be very coherent. So much so in fact that a lot of their units look pretty similar on the battlefield. Just look at the Fire Slayers or the 40k Poster Boy Space Marines. Every unit has small differences for sure, but from a distance they tend to blur a bit together. At least, that's how I see it. Stormcast Eternals suffer a bit the same problem in my opinion, especially the units in the Dominion box. So I decided to give them an identifying factor that also gives this army a bit more visual variety. I decided to color code my units. Now what does that mean? Well it's simple, I just painted certain details in different colors. Here I mostly focus on the codes of the Praetors, the Knight Vexilier, the Lord Imperitant and the Knight Arcanum. Green for the Knight Arcanum, blue for the Lord Imperitant, red for the Knight Vexilier and violet for the Praetors. My basic method here was to base the details with a dark tone with a brush, like Chimera's Violet. And after that I simply used my airbrush for lighter and lighter tones. I also added a few highlights with the brush to give the cloth a bit of texture. Now for the base I went with the same Chimera Violet I used before. After completely applying this tone I washed the bases with a very watered down Beastie Brown. Now after letting this dry I simply dry brushed the bases with pale yellow, 
followed by a mix of pale yellow and violet. Following that I went over the base with the army painter's purple tone and I let that sufficiently dry. I dry brushed the base with medium flush and in the end with bone white, both from Vallejo. And after painting all the gems with pure red, fixing a few minor mistakes and adding appropriately colored tufts, the eternal sin eaters were ready for battle. Finally I managed to crack open this box and started to paint this side of the box. And I have to admit, I really like what came out of it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments and if you like this video, please consider a like or share it with your friends. Also if you're new here and haven't already subscribed, I'd be happy to welcome you as my newest subscriber. And if you want to help me in a more financial matter, you can either join my Patreon or leave a tip here via the thanks function. But even if you don't, I'm very thankful that you decided to give this one a watch. And if you want to see more, you can check out this one where I paint a bunch of awesome hand sculpted skeletons and also build a fitting graveyard to place them in. In my next video, we will go back to building some terrain that in my opinion at least should be in every fantasy terrain collection. So until then, farewell fellow adventurers.